Sir, when we received your honor, your the order that said that we should release Mr. Bent by December 31st, 2015, we wanted to let your honor know that the Corrections Department does not have the authority to release someone on parole, and Mr. Bent, because he has served prison time, must have a parole term, and only the parole board can determine that term, and only the parole board can grant or deny parole. And in this case, the statute is clear that there must be an approved parole plan and conditions of parole signed by the parolee before he can parole. None of those have happened yet, and that is why the department has not released Mr. Bent from custody. I wanted to make your honor aware of that. I also wanted to make your honor aware of the fact that on February the 5th, coming up very shortly, there will be a parole hearing for Mr. Bent. But to be honest with you, Your Honor, I don't believe that he will be approved for parole at that time. Uh, there are concerns from the parole officers, and they've made recommendations to the board. The board can overlook their recommendations if they want to, but the recommendations are that where he would live would be in a place where there is not adequate cell service. And as a condition of his parole under Section 31-21-10.1e, he must have an electronic electronic monitoring device on him and one could not be used at the location where he would propose to reside. I don't speak on behalf of the parole board, Your Honor. I'm only here on behalf of the Corrections Department, but I'm merely pointing out to you that these are some concerns that I believe that the parole board will have to look at. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, Your Honor, I didn't hear what you asked me. Uh, actually, there's so much bad on the line. Judge, should I hang up and you can call back in? Yes, sir. Go ahead and hang up and let me take one back. Okay, thank you. This one's dead. Thank you. Thanks. correct your honor and, and again I want to be very careful your honor I don't represent the parole board I represent the corrections department I can't put words in their mouth but that I'm sure that that would be a concern that they would look at and I'm just advising the court of the various reasons why the corrections department did not release this individual on December 31st 2015 and that's really all I have your honor unless you have questions thank you Mr. Brewster Mr. Olson, was an agreement between the state and the defense? Uh, what is the state's position? Your Honor, in this uh, matter, the state, uh, as you have indicated, did reach an agreement with the defense counsel under the circumstances, I believe, due to the defendant's uh, health. However, the state is in a position in this case of really deferring to the Department of Corrections. This is an issue that they um, have brought forth, and it's um, the state will, uh, will back the opinion of the Department of Corrections, but does not have a separate opinion um, to bring forth to the court. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Mr. McCall? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I could, there's, a, there's several issues that haven't yet been laid out related to this. Um, first of all, uh, as was noted, the order uh, indicated release by January 1st. Um, the, at the beginning of January, Mr. Bent was scheduled for a, a surgery um, on his ear uh, where the cancer has been, and um, that surgery was not performed at that time due to some decisions by the Department of Corrections. 
The surgery has been moved to uh, the beginning of March, and there's a danger that he will lose his hearing permanently in his right ear if the surgery is not performed as soon as possible. So I wanted to let Your Honor know about that because that was kind of what brought us all into this place in the, in the first place. Um, and uh, with respect to uh, the parole board, we have talked to their um, attorneys, it, I think sometime around the time this motion was filed. I actually expected their attorneys to, to be here today. I'm concerned that their attorney is, or attorneys are not here and that we might need to have a hearing with them involved because they seem to be the linchpin and they have insisted on following their administrative procedures over the court's order and I have a real concern about that because they had the order in November of 2015 and they had the opportunity to fulfill all of the requirements of the order uh, prioritizing the court's order over their own administrative process which I think is what we normally do in state government um, given the three branches of, of uh, the separation of powers. And uh, so I'm really concerned that an administrative process um, is affecting something that where they had enough time to go through their process if they had made a few changes. Uh, so I don't think it's, um, you know, to come and not even appear at a hearing. I know they're aware of this hearing, but they only got, I think, a, a notice from DOC Council uh, yesterday, and so I understand that, but I still think that they are a necessary party to this matter, and um, I don't know if there's a case that is determined that the parole board is completely independent of the Department of Corrections. I know that they are asserting their independence and they are a separate um, agency in, in a sense, but they are also intertwined with the Department of Corrections. So this is, I think, very important. The other issue, and Mr. Brewster was kind enough to, to inform me about this cell issue, uh, we have enough time now that we know about it that um, we may be able to bring in proof and evidence to the parole board hearing on February 5th that um, actual cell service is available and that cell extenders uh, can be put into the home and the, through the Verizon cell phone service that is available there that, that this issue can be addressed. My understanding, and I practice a lot in Albuquerque, is that these GPS monitors go direct to uh, satellite because uh, in Albuquerque we have zones where people are not allowed to go, and I know, I'm pretty sure that the ankle bracelet in that type of a situation is functioning independent of any kind of cell phone service. I'm not completely sure, but I think it has to be that way for those zones of um, protection to be enforced. Uh, with those GPS ankle bracelets that we use in Albuquerque. So I'm, I'm a little confused on that issue, but since it's on the record, I thought I would uh, bring that to the court's attention. And um, again, going back to the surgery in conclusion, there are several complications here. Uh, the concern is that he will lose his hearing. The other concern is if he's released um, in February, which uh, is possible if this issue is addressed with the parole board, um, then he will have uh, less than a month to put uh, in health insurance in place as he is, he is basically indigent at this point uh, to cover the cost of the, of the surgery. Um, if he is not released uh, on, in February pursuant to the parole uh, board meeting and or there's another parole board meeting that's scheduled for March 4th, my concern there is is that the the timing will will cause an issue with the um, the surgery, which is also planned for the beginning of of March at UNM um, Hospital. So uh, those are those are my concerns on behalf of Mr. Ben. And Mr. Ben is asking me; he wants to relay one other issue. Could I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you.
Okay, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, and, and let me correct the, the record on that. Uh, first off, the the surgery on the ear has apparently been canceled by the Department of Corrections, the one that's um, in danger of losing hearing because of the expense. And I think it's the anesthesia expense that was a concern. Uh, but there is another surgery because the cancer is now on the other side of his face near his uh, right ear, the other ear, the good ear, and that is the surgery that is scheduled for the beginning of March. So I, I apologize. Um, for, for getting that a little bit confused. So, uh, there's one other um, issue uh, I wanted to bring to your attention and the state's attention. And according to the caseworker that Mr. Bent has, the, they, they were proposing to interpret a requirement of eight years of parole from the amended judgment and sentence. And we can maybe visit that at some point, but I don't see that in the amended judgment and sentence, but I wanted to bring it to your attention and put it on the record. Again, my concern is um, if DOC feels uh, constrained by the parole board's um, authority and jurisdiction with regards to Mr. Bent's release, then I'm concerned that um, since we don't know exactly what's going to happen, that we may need to to have a hearing where we hear from their counsel and thus your honor can see a, a way to order a disposition of this that will resolve all the issues that have been uh, put before the court today. Thank you, Mr. McCall. And as Mr. Olson noted, uh, this was essentially an agreement between the parties and it was approved by the court. I think Mr. Brewster is correct in their motion and that the parties nor the court took into consideration that the parole period. It seems like we need to do possibly two things. Either have the party submit a second amended judgment and sentence reflecting the agreement of the parties and which does comply with section 312110E or setting aside the judgment and sentence, the amended judgment and sentence, and the parties go back to the drawing board altogether. Uh, Mr. Olson, what's the state's position? Your Honor, uh, as you're aware, with your uh, proposed resolution, the state hasn't had an opportunity to discuss this with Mr. McCall. I can state that I think the state would prefer to reach some sort of an agreement on an amended JNS, since we're the ones that um, kind of started this in the first place. So if you could give us some time to do that, perhaps we will um, submit it to the court and then now that we are aware of the issue, we can include um, the issues of parole, the statute that you voted, as well as um, make sure that everyone's on the same page before we submit it to you, and then you can approve it and uh, hopefully uh, remove the necessity of having a further hearing on the issue. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Mr. McCall? I believe that is the, uh, the best way to proceed, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor. Yeah. Your Honor, this is Jim Brewster. I'm sorry, Your Honor. This is Jim Brewster. May I address you one more time to, to clarify one point? Yes, yeah, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. McCall indicated that he wasn't sure that the department was completely separate from the parole board. I would point you to a couple of statutes that make that crystal clear. If you would take a look, Your Honor, at section 33-1-7, along with section 9-3-11, I think it's pretty clear there that the parole board is the one that handles parole issues, even though they are affiliated with the corrections department in the sense they are administratively attached to the department, but they, own, they have their own powers and duties and are separately represented by the attorney general's office. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Brewster. Now, I do appreciate your bringing these concerns to the attention of the parties of the court. Uh, clearly, we were deficit in not taking into consideration the parole period. And now, I'd like to ask one other thing, another issue that Mr. McCall brought up. What about a furlough for any operation, Mr. McCall? Well, Your Honor, I think the biggest concern is uh, these are what I would call major medical procedures because they're dealing with cancer. And um, so 
as has always been the case in these cases, we have two conflicting interests here. One is the interest to to follow the original order or the spirit of the original order to, to have him released so that he can, um, being that he is a vegetarian and, and lives a, a certain very particular lifestyle that is not easy in the prison, um, that he can get back into the very healthy oriented lifestyle that he had um, at full speed. But at the other side, we have the issue of there are actual medical procedures being scheduled. Doctors are making decisions um, independent of this whole process because their duty is to, to save life. And then um, there's the third prong of the issue, which is whether the Department of Corrections will be involved. And then they make decisions also based on their budgetary constraints um, and, and how that impacts his ability to get um, insurance because he can't really get, I don't think he can get insurance until he's out of the Department of Corrections. So all of these things are converging within the month of, month of February and action um, on, the, on his health issues, according to the doctors, needs to be taken as soon as possible, which I think has been scheduled for March. Um, so, so I, um, I think if, uh, I think what would be most efficacious, probably uh, given the updates that we now have on his medical process, would be if myself and Mr. Olson and Mr. Brewster and the attorney for the um, parole board could all maybe do a conference call regarding this second amended JNS. And, uh, and at that time we could um, try to address this uh, cluster of issues because DOC is affected by the medical issues. They have a duty and responsibility and yet they're in the gray because they don't know exactly what the parole board is gonna do about the release issues. So it might be that we should all get together in a conference call or something like that to, uh, to address all of these issues in that second amended uh, judgment and sentence. Thank you, Mr. McCall. This is McCall, Mr. Olson, please submit a second amendment judgment and sentence within the next 15 days. If you are unable to agree, please submit a request for setting and we'll schedule this matter for hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. We will do that. And Mr. Olson, is there anything else? No, not on behalf of the state. Thank you, Judge. Mr. McCall? No, uh, thank you, Your Honor. No, thank you. Mr. Brewster? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you all, and I really appreciate your accommodating me telephonically. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to go ahead and convene this jury. Court is adjourned. Everyone have a nice day. Thank you, Judge. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Me too. We'll be getting that out. Well, my book is out there now, so hopefully we can uh, get out of here within the next hour or so.